Do you want to learn the very best Streamlabs OBS settings so you can optimize your video quality to the highest extent? Well, this is the video for you. Let's get straight into it. Hey, what is going on guys? It's Delvage and today I'm bringing you a Streamlabs OBS recording tutorial. Now I know a lot of you guys out there make your own content, stream your own games and that's so cool. So I wanted to make a tutorial on Streamlabs OBS, a basic one to help you guys kind of get the very best settings. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. On the bottom left hand side, you'll have your scene selection and this is essentially where you choose the scene that you're going to be using. For me, I actually have three separate ones. This is just a basic one that I created before for no reason essentially. Uh, but yeah, I have three separate scenes. I have one for regular recording, one for streaming, and one for visuals by Impulse, which is a graphic company that I work for. Going back to these scenes, essentially what you can do is you can create multiple scenes and then inside those scenes you have sources. And sources can be anything from your display that's capturing your monitor, it could be an image that you input, it could be any kind of alert or widget that you would put for streaming, but for the recording side of things, we can just click the plus icon here, go to display capture, click add source, and then add the source depending on what monitor uh, you want to use to capture. If you have a multiple monitor setup like I do, I almost stumbled over that, but I didn't, so I don't have to edit that out. Super proud of myself, but yeah, just rename it. Uh, add new source and it'll show up here in the sources. I've already done that. As you can see, I'm currently recording a monitor one to record this YouTube video. If you want to hide a source, all you got to do is click this uh, eyeball right here. And uh, I'm not going to do that because my screen's going to go black and that's not going to be a good viewing experience. But on the right hand side is your mixer, which is where you record all of your audio throughout your recording or streaming. Right here, you have your microphone and auxiliary, which is what I'm using right now, my Blue Yeti microphone to record audio for this video and then you also have desktop audio so this would be where your game audio would come from if you were to record a video game. Down below all of these three mini little sections here we have this one bar uh, which is the button to go live once you have your stream stuff set up, the recording button, a button to test the widgets for your stream which is just not uh, applicable in a recording setting. To the left here, this is where you have the percentage of your CPU that the application is actually taking up, which is pretty nice to have. You have your FPS that you're currently recording at, dropped frames in case that's an issue, uh, your notifications, as well as cloud backup. And then the kilobytes per second is essentially your upload for when you're streaming, which just doesn't apply to recording. The next thing that I want you guys to go up and do is go to the settings icon on the top right. It should be the gear icon. And you're going to want to go to output. So once you have output, here change the output mode to advanced and then go all the way down to recording now you guys can copy the settings that I have here because this actually works really well some things are going to change depending on your computer so for example you can choose your recording path you can click browse and it'll take you to your file explorer on your computer if you're using Windows 10 and you can choose a specific file for the output of your videos for your recording format I like to use mp4 but if you have other needs for your videos you can definitely change that here for audio tracks I like like to leave it as one but if you have multiple audio inputs then maybe that's something that you need to dabble and change with and right here is recording now if you have an AMD graphics card NVIC isn't going to show up for you, but if you have an Intel, then that's exactly what's gonna show up. Personally, I believe NVIC, uh, NVIC, I can't speak guys, anyways. NVIC actually provides a better image quality than X264 for my personal opinion, for what I've been using and what I've been testing. NVIC actually provides a better image quality, so I definitely recommend you choose that, especially for recording guys, because recording, you don't have a whole lot of power that's being used compared to streaming. If you want to rescale the output of your actual video quality, then you can check this box and you can choose the output resolution. But for the purposes of this video and for what I use, I'm not going to check that. For the rate control, just choose CBR. That's the best one in my opinion. For bitrate, obviously higher is going to be better, but it depends on your computer and how much processing power you want to give it in order to record. All of these settings can basically be left to default and make sure you check two-tone encoding. That's really important. 
For audio bitrate, it depends on your specific type of audio device, but I just leave it at 160 because I think that's just perfectly fine and I don't have any issues. After that, you're gonna wanna go to audio and you're gonna wanna choose your microphone or auxiliary device. Now, don't make the same mistake I did by trying to find my microphone in the desktop audio. I spent so much time trying to figure out why I couldn't find my microphone, but it was because I was trying to use one of the two desktop audio sub menus, I should say. For the microphone auxiliary device, that's where you want to choose your primary microphone and that's where I have my Yeti one that I'm actually using to record this video right now. Moving on to video, I choose 1920 by 1080 at 60 FPS. Now if you want to record in 30 FPS, you can go ahead and do that. If you want to record in 720p or even a higher resolution, you can go ahead and do that. But 1080p 60 FPS is what I like to record at. The next probably most important option is downscale filter. I believe by default it's at bicubic 16 samples. You're going to want to change that to Lanczos sharpened scaling 32 samples. Underneath video is the hotkeys. Now you can go through all of these if you really want to, but I don't personally have any hotkeys set up. Although if you have a stream deck by Elgato, you might want to click a button in order to start your stream and instead of having to go straight into the Streamlabs OBS platform. For advanced settings, what I would do is change the YUV color range from partial to full. And yeah, that's basically it guys. Um, also, I guess I should mention this. When you first install Streamlabs OBS, I do believe it's it's not in night mode. It's, it's just like regular day mode. Personally, I hate this. Like, I don't know if you, if you don't use night mode, I can't I don't know like I don't, honestly I don't know for the purposes of this tutorial I'm actually gonna add a few more sources just so you guys can kind of get the gist of it you can add the source I'm gonna name this I don't know thumbnail because I'm probably gonna add a thumbnail from my desktop to this just to kind of show you guys uh, animated wallpaper thumbnail here we go you can click done and then we can actually move it around with our mouse if we want to we can rescale it as well uh, just by dragging the corners really easy really simple to do we can hold shift on our keyboard so that it doesn't maintain its aspect ratio although i definitely wouldn't recommend doing that and we're actually just going to delete that because we don't have a need for it um, moving on to the mixer which is basically the last thing that i want to show you guys um, we can change the volume by dragging down this microphone here and then drag it all the way back up to see a good full presentation for desktop audio we can do the exact same thing if you want to add a filter, all we have to do is click the gear icon, go to filters. We can click this plus icon on the left and we can add a bunch of filters. Now, I'm not going to go into each individual one, but essentially you can reduce your noise background. Uh, you can add a compressor. You can add some voice gain if you really need that for your microphone, but that's kind of more advanced stuff and I definitely don't need any of that today. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Again, I'm going to be making a separate video on the actual best stream settings for Streamlabs OBS in 2019. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I said that twice, but whatever, we're going to keep going with it. Uh, if you did, make sure to give it a like rating and good luck recording with this program. If you want to see a, a tutorial for this regular OBS, I can do that as well. But yeah, guys, until next time, my name's Delvich and I'm out. Peace.